Welcome back to Home of the Van. Yeah, so today we're finishing off our walls, finally. Finishing our uh, drawer faces. Yep, and uh, Josh is doing all of the electrical for the solar panel. Yeah! So by the end of the day, all we need is a solar panel, which we will be ordering shortly. And a battery. Yes, and a battery, I guess. <laughs> yeah! So check out what we're doing today. Hi. Hi. So I think in a previous video we mentioned our plan for our uh, battery box here, something I came up with to help it uh, kind of stay tidy and be easy to work on. So uh, you gotta have your fuse panel, obviously, very important. And these, this is a good style to have too because it gives you lots of uh, uh, negative terminal buses because you can't uh, ground a body when everything is made of wood. There's our cheap little charge controller. Um, I've seen a lot of these actually in different builds. Uh, this is about the cheapest one I think you can get on Amazon. And it's got uh, spelling errors right on the face of it, which is uh, comforting. And then uh, we just got our little 400 watt inverter. We went with 400 watts because I think it'll power most of the things uh, one at a time that you would really want to use. And uh, our build is a little bit basic, just sort of our our desire and our, our vision for this build. Just got a greasy old uh, lead acid deep cycle battery here that I had in the garage. This is just kind of like a little placeholder. So let's get to making some wires here. This is where our switches are gonna go. These guys right here. So it comes with this nice little uh, rubber isolator. So what we did was we just trace the inside of it, drill your big holes to allow your jigsaw to go through, and then cut her out. Just uh, temporarily hooked it up just to uh, show it off here. There she is. Okay, here's the quick and dirty on this. So starting from our switches, we've got our our switch for our fridge circuit, and that's actually going to <coughs> activate a, a 12 volt relay like this one because there's gonna be uh, a constant circuit, so I figured it'll be better to not have that going through our switch <clears throat> constantly. Uh, this is gonna be for our inverter, and that actually already is responsible for this relay. So it activates this relay and sends current to our inverter. And then I'll just leave the, uh, the switch on. This switch is gonna be for our 12 volt uh, audio amplifier. So it'll live in here with the rest of our electronics. <clears throat> this switch is for our uh, overhead lights. It's a little gross back there right now, but our wires come in through here, come out through our bulkhead, and then into our wiretorium here. And then this is, of course, where our battery's gonna live. So the first tip um, I have, uh, these little butt connectors that you get with the plastic tip on them, uh, you can still get these, but don't use the plastic tip. These make a really bad crimp, and you can't tell really if you've got a good insertion, you know, and you can't really see your crimp. So what I always do is I buy these, pull that little guy off, just like that. And then you want to get some heat shrink tubing. This stuff here, this is a little bit small, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Get your wire, before you strip it, slide it on there, strip it. You can see how much nicer these little guys go on there now. Just like that. Get your crimp. You want to be wondering when you're driving down the road about all your crimps and if any wires are falling out of them. So then you get your heat shrink tubing, slide it over like that. And then you would heat shrink, but I don't have my torch. What I was talking about with my heat shrink. So th this is your, this is why you want to get rid of all those little plastic things. They take up a lot more room as well. So you can see mine looking all nice here. My next tip is uh, just make everything look nice. The more you keep everything looking nice and tidy, the easier it is gonna be to figure out if anything's gone wrong with it, you know, you're troubleshooting down the road. And it just makes you feel like you know what you're doing. I'm only uh, 
kind of just getting started with uh, this particular build. I'd say I'm probably 60% of the way through running all my wires and everything, but yeah, that's huge. Just keep everything looking nice. Yeah. So that's it for wiring for today. Now we get to finally finish our ceiling and our paneling for our wall and our window. Keep your tuned in, toit. So, in the doorway here, we have this bulge uh, from the metal, and basically it's causing us issues, so we're going to sort of work around it. Here it is. Perks of working in a van. We've finished our ceiling and walls. You can see now. There you go. We're doing the trim at the back at a later time, and it'll come all together pretty nicely. Okay, so now we are working on our window trim, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, that's perfectly fitting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's really good though. So our window is framed in. We're leaving the corner or the edges available and not framing them in because our curtains are gonna hide that anyways. And well. Now we're moving on to the next window. All right, and we just have a little bit of lip on the other window. We used a couple one by twos and we're all done. So this past week we brought our drawers inside, took off all the skateboard bearings, stained them with a wiping stain and we chose the cedar color. So the pop out of white color in our van is gonna be cedar and then we're doing a pickling white and white for the rest of the van. Um, so this is one of the things that's going to be cedar. Uh, we just taped it and so the inside actually is not stained just because it's going to be really hard to get back in there and do the staining because these are fixed pieces. So we just chose to stain the outside, left the inside rough so that anything we put in there it would ding it up and such. So that's that. We're doing about four or five coats of varathane on the surface, staining or sanding in between to make it nice and smooth so that it's wipeable and cleanable when we bring them out as a kitchen surface. We've got a, an initial cut for our uh, door faces and for our kitchen faces. So all we did was we laid our panel up against our kitchen here, made our marks and uh, made our cuts just like that. So, I like these are going to be our door faces here, and then these are pretty much uh, stationary part of the kitchen. So we had an idea that we think is pretty crafty, and that we haven't actually seen yet. So if you tune in next week, you'll find out what we're going to use all of these materials to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs>